felt in my heart to share a word and I believe the Lord has put in my heart. But I also felt in my heart uh, that uh, these days I've been praying and I say to the Lord, Lord, we have so many modern technology, everything is there. You know, we have this PowerPoints, we have projectors, we have electricity, we have cameras, people across the globe listen to the sermon and they comment throughout the week. We have all of this, but the early church did not have all of this. The early church had nothing. The early church had no chairs. The early church had no air condition. The early church had no um, uh, climate controlled rooms. But the early church had something that you and me, I don't know about you, but I covet. I desire that. And I said to the Lord uh, many, many months ago, and I said, Lord, if you want to take away all these things, take it out. And sometimes, you know, you don't know what you're praying. And this morning, the projector stopped working. And I said, Lord, you can take all of these, but do not take the presence the early church had from me. And that's my prayer. I'm, I'm having goosebumps. I mean, have you ever said something that you have goosebumps after you said? <laughs> and that's the feeling that I have. So this morning I want to talk about church and it's a topic that uh, that I'm going to be sharing uh, uh, briefly from the book of Ephesians but also uh, I'm going to be highlighting a couple of scriptures here and there but just before that I want to share a, I want to ask you a question a little bit of a humorous question uh, why did uh, God uh, why God did not appreciate uh, uh, Cain's uh, offering do you know why Anybody has a clue? Uh, coin brought an offering, right? Because it was a vegetarian. <laughs> it was a vegan offering. <laughs> so uh, I thought it will be a humorous way to start. But any human, any vegetarians out there, I'll pray for revelation to be converted. My grandfather was a vegetarian. He died as a vegetarian. But he was a, a temple priest. Uh, so he kept himself uh, like that. Anyway, so if you do have a Bible, lift it up. Say this with me, Lord Jesus, influence me this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will speak to us. I pray that you will reveal your heart to us. You will take us uh, knowing you, Lord. And we have all this technology, all this facilities, even cordless microphones that I can swing my hands here and there and talk. But Lord, if your presence is not there, all this just a show, all this just a program. And people are not satisfied with a show and a program because this void that you put in us is created for one purpose that only you can fill that void. Not even the things of yours can fill that void. So I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will fill this void that you made. So we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So turn your book to Bible to the book of Ephesians. So we're going to... Uh, camp in the book of Ephesians for the next 25-30 minutes. There is nothing up in the screen to look at. So I'm going to be <clears throat> uh, talking to you from the book of Ephesians. Uh, so if you do have that, keep it with you so that you can, uh, uh, for the sake of reference, uh, you can uh, read some of those. Okay, let me read a, a quote uh, from D.L. Moody. How many of you heard D.L. Moody? Okay. D.L. Moody said this, a great American evangelist once said, if a man is stealing nuts and bowls from a railway track, and in order to change him, you send him to your college, at the end of his education, he will steal the whole railway track. And D.L. Moody, I'm, I'm one of his fans, and when he mentioned that, I realized the church now, the modern day church now is talking about many things that people are over informed but under equipped they are over informed they have all the information at the tip of the finger they have the knowledge of a greek word for certain things they have the knowledge of the root word for a hebrew translation they have various translations various versions and they have options to hear various ways of preaching techniques 
but we lack something very basic fundamental which is how to be a church in the dying world and somehow we realized i come to a realization a church is nothing if we as the christians or the body of christ don't realize the church is nothing other than being a living organism of jesus day in and day out every day of your life and if you happen to believe that i have gone to church okay my prayer is this okay i think um, it was uh, 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 i forgot his name uh, it was uh, what's his name uh, he's from new zealand and that guy is no more he said this and i quote you can't cast your flesh and disciple the demon you can't cast your flesh and disciple the demon and many times we as christians we kind of compartmentalize today is sunday church day we always talk about it church day let's go to church let's attend a service but my prayer is what's going to be on monday what are we going to do on monday you know how are we living on monday are we still a worshipper on monday and i i wrote this devotion a couple of days ago and i would like to read this before uh, i jump into that and uh, for some of you you might have received this i said um, when we talk or think about worship we relate it to a building a place a time or an event worship related to those or mere sign that religion has taken captive of our minds and hearts worship is beyond that you carry worship in your heart worship is the constant awareness of the meekness and the majesty of our king jesus it is the mystery of both the lamb and the lion in one it is living in the reality of the realm of his presence every day every moment of our lives i dare to say this there is no worship pleasing to god until there is nothing displeasing to him you can't worship god on sunday and live in bitterness on monday if you can't worship god on monday in your workplace you haven't worship god on sunday at the church building if you haven't worship god on saturday your worship to god on sunday is not authentic so worship to god can't be limited to your place or event one man of god used to say this and i quote you are not worshiping right in any place until you are worshiping god right in every place and i wrote this couple of days ago i sent a devotion notes that i send to many of uh, people around the world it's it takes actually 60 seconds to read it it's called a one minute devotion so i've written this for 500 days so um, we are putting together as a book uh, so then the people can you know, be blessed it's called a, a one minute devotion now my question is this how we worship god on saturday are we are waiting to worship god on sunday then we miss the point are we capable to worship god on monday which is tomorrow mondays mondays happens on mondays right <laughs> mundane like that's why it's called monday anyway excuse my pun so that's the reality like mundane stuff can you worship god on mundane monday stuff if we can't i think we need to question ourselves there are four elements it's not up in the screen i want to highlight before we jump into this uh, of worship the first one is admiration admiration what is admiration are you admiring the presence of jesus see today if we don't like the song the worship leader is singing we immediately kind of zoom out right we turn the phone on we watch the cell phone we kind of move around because it is not my cup of tea right we say that this music is not my cup of tea worship is beyond music are you admiring jesus to admire a person you need to have a sense of respect you can never res- admire if you don't respect hello kapish 
it doesn't make sense hold on next 25 minutes okay i want you to pay attention so first one is admiration that means are you in the constant admiring that means see it's it's good to worship when a corporate sense like the girls and the team were singing beautifully it was a bit of a goosebumpy emotional thing but that's sh- that's the beginning part of worship that's the feeling god uses your feeling to worship yes but it doesn't stop there it goes one more step deeper what is that a deep sense of admiring that you you are constantly you know the poets the mystics when they go to the mountains they make beautiful poems right you go to the and i sometimes we go to this elegri hills you know just here it's like our little getaway place because vellur is uh, you know the sun is here the earth is here vellur is here so i don't know that's how god created vellur so that's our, my interpretation of vellur so we actually move from vellur to go to the earth and there is elegri hills there we go there so me and my wife and my team we kind of made peace with that sun earth vellur is here so it's a bit hot and people ask me in abroad when we go what kind of climate you have i said two climates hot and hotter there is nothing else in between in vellur even in december it's hot you know that's what we are known for so when people go to this mountain they see the waterfalls and there is a kind of admiration they make a poet and they make a poem out of it but my point is are you admiring jesus is beauty is is uh, is love towards you that's the, that's worship the second one it's confidence confidence see you can never worship a god if you don't confidence in that in who he is and what he said so if that's why they say you know when the rubber hits the tire you know are you real person or not and are you real worshiper or not so where is your confidence is your confidence in the things or in your confidence in the stuff that you thought one day it's going to rescue see sri lanka was doing really well i have a lot of sri lankan friends God has taken us to Sri Lanka to be a blessing there and today what Sri Lanka is going through we are not so far you know their money money is it's one Sri Lankan rupee was almost equal to one Indian rupee then it became one Indian rupee was two Sri Lankan rupee today it's one Indian rupee it's 100 Sri Lankan rupee and its inflation shot up i mean it's crazy so are you in the place of admiration or in the place of confidence can you put your confidence in god and say god i know you can handle this i trust in you you know and that's what the song the first song we sang you know you give and take away but job had a limited revelation job lived before christ he had a limited revelation so he said he give and take away my heart will still choose to say blessed be the name of the lord he he had a limited revelation but we know we live in the fullness of the revelation of christ what is that god is not a taker he is a rewarder of faith amen now we live in the full revelation of christ can we still say my confidence is in the lord amen come on church my confidence is in the lord psalm is wrote it in 27 psalm verse 13 i will not die but live and declare the goodness of the lord in the land of living he lived in that old revelation but he still had a revelation of what is yet to come now we live in the fullness of christ and now can we still say my confidence is in christ amen it's the second one so you have admiration you have confidence the third one which people often use this it's which i don't like to use is called adoration adoration is a word which is related to awesome people say i had an awesome pizza you know what is the word adoration and awesome means reverential fear do you look at domino's pizza with a reverential fear if you do i need to pray for you because you need deliverance that's actually wants people say oh adore this baby you know people say oh she looks adorable adoring you know that's why we sing this old song you know come let us adore him adore means you are you are so thrilled and all you do is what the kings did 
you come lay prostrate before his presence you don't do that by looking at your curry oh looking at a little you know the babies have that cuteness they say oh she's adorable oh but that is just not the proper way to use it jesus only deserves that word because he adore he is adorable you know why because the bible says in philippians 2 he left the godhead took a form of man so that you and me can become you know cs lewis beautifully puts it the son of god become a son of man so the sons and daughters of men can become sons and daughters of god see when god came as a man he didn't degrade himself he actually elevated man to become who god intended us to be do you understand what i'm trying to say amen so the first one come on are you taking notes if you're not taking notes take notes the first one admiration second one confidence third one adore the fourth one this is very interesting it's it's called fascination are you fascinated by jesus you know we are fascinated by so many things right you know uh, my kids like to watch bollywood uh, dances there was a movie came called pushpa i don't know some of you might have seen and uh, and they had this funny dance move i don't know whether anybody know have you seen some of you look like super holy you are thinking charles you are a pastor how dare you give me a huh? uh, may the lord judge you but i am not going to but have you seen the pushpa the crazy crazy dance and my son learned that and uh, he would do like this and he would do he would be fascinated he has watched that song i don't know how many times he is so fascinated by that and even if somebody is making a memes you would like daddy what is this going on you know that's a fascination right it stays for a while and then it moves on then new thing comes you know and then a new movie came rrr you know like uh, there is a new song that came and they were stone jumping like you know they were jumping <laughs> i don't know you know uh, not to song and something like that <laughs> hima might know what i'm talking about you know <laughs> and uh, it's a telugu song that became so hit and people are like jumping up and down i have some of my white friends like wow charles can you dance like that i said to them i'm from a pentecostal background where dancing was considered like you are part of hell so i'm slowly getting converted so anyway but <laughs> we get fascinated by that right we get fascinated by the drama the music the movies we get fascinated by 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 going to a restaurant but let me ask you are you fascinated by the beauty of jesus this worship guys are you i mean this is a reality question that i'm asking i'm not going to ask you a question that i am not asking to myself so i'm asking the lord lord show me david says no reveal show anything that is impure take it out search me oh lord so i'm making a little examination and i'm saying lord search me am i admiring you can i admire you do i admire you on the off days or on the mundane stuff do I, am i in fascination with you do i adore you and do i put my confidence in you or in the things that i think that i need to hold on to amen church my brothers and sisters is not something that you do so i wrote down here it's nothing up in the screen in the book of ephesians it's it's paul names this about church and in chapter 4 he names the reason why the church is exist and that's what i want to deal with okay chapter 4 turn with me to book of ephesians chapter 4 okay if you are searching for ephesians is after genesis and before revelation okay so chapter 1 talks about the understanding of the gospel of salvation and christ ultimate authority over mankind chapter 2 talks about we are seated in christ it is not earned but given to us through its though, therefore it's a privilege chapter 3 talks about being rooted in christ love chapter 4 talks about the body of christ attaining the fullness of christ and chapter 5 talks about be drunk in the new wine of god's love and there is a greek word called carpe diem uh, and the chapter 6 uh, it's a stand firm be bold you are armed and dangerous so but we don't have time to talk about all the chapters i'll just take chapter 4 and we will tell next maybe 15 20 minutes are you guys okay 
Everybody, are we learning something? Something beautiful? Okay. Chapter 4 talks about body of Christ attaining the fullness of Christ. Okay. Now, I think it was Bill Johnson who said this and I quote, Everyone likes Jesus, but they have a problem with his body, the church. Everyone likes Jesus. There is not a single person. We were in Varanasi ministering a couple of years ago. and We met some gurus, sadhus. They like Jesus. They have no problem with Jesus. But they have a problem with his body. Who is that? You and me. The father of our nations. Somebody asked him, Why are you not a Christian? And he said, I like Christ. Not there. And it is absolutely true. Look at us. We are so divided. We are so completely. We don't even we don't even represent. Even in, we work in a you know Christian school, Christian hospital, but we have so divided over doctrines and belief systems that we don't represent Christ at all. Look at our churches. We are so divided. Now let's look at. I want to read two or three scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 4 to 6. Okay. There are seven ones God mentions here. Okay. Through a Paul. There is one body, one spirit, just as you called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all in you all. Can you mention seven ones are there? One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. What is the bottom line? Unity, not uniformity. See, we think uniformity is the sign of unity. I don't think so. Just because everyone wears a similar type of clothing doesn't mean everybody is unified. Unity comes inside. Unity is the best example of unity is Trinity. Father is not the same like Son. Son is not the same like Holy Spirit. They represent individually, but they are world together. They complement one another. They don't com compete one another. Amen? In the kingdom of God, there is no competition. There is only complementation. I mean, so I need you, you need me. God never worked independent. He works interdependence. Amen? So, that's the first thing. But let me read, let me go through this. I'm skipping here and there, so pay attention in chapter 4. Let's move to uh, verses, verse 11. Okay, now Paul writes, he talks about the gifts Jesus gave. You know, we all know the spiritual gifts that Holy Spirit gave in 1 Corinthians 14. He talks about the 12, 13 and 14 and Romans 8, Romans 12 and it's 1 Peter 4. He all talks about different Holy Spirit gifts. There are practical gifts. There are gifts, the motivational gifts and all those things are there. But this particular is a gift that Jesus gives and he gives to the body, which is you and me. He gives five gifts and this call here, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. Now, if you look at these five, it's like an hand here. Okay. If you like your food, which finger you like, show. You'll show the thumbs. This is the apostle finger. And the finger that touches all the apostles, basically it's not a religious word. It's a, it's a circular word that Jesus used for somebody to go and represent. My prayer and my belief is this. Everyone here is an apostle. You may not function in the office of an apostle, but you have an apostolic calling on everyone. What is an apostolic calling? That means you are called to go. Apostle means to be sent. Okay. My question is this. Have you received Jesus? Yes? <laughs> Only one hand. Oh Lord Jesus. Maybe I should do an altar call before I talk about this. Have you received Jesus? Yes. So that means you have something deposited in you already. Now, Holy Spirit is not a lake. is a river. He flows through you. Now, who are you? You are sent out. You are an apostle. You've been sent out. You've been sent to your different spheres of influence. Some of you in the medical field. Some of you in the teaching field. Some of you in the education field. Some of you in the arts and media. So you're all sent out. So who are you? You have an apostolic calling. What is your apostolic calling? To go and represent him. Represent means re 
present him everything that god did is taking us back that's why a lot of words represent repent the word repent pent is a old english word for to think god says repent that's why we have pent house the top floor where you can have a beautiful panorama you are on the basement minus 2 you will now have, have beautiful panorama you will have a virtual screen you can look at it but if you have a pent house that's why pent house means we view beautiful repent the greek word is called metanoia change of mind okay rain you what does that mean making something new again reconcile to bring us back again reborn you are born but you are again reborn again so everything jesus did is to take us backwards hello he didn't come here to do something new he said i came here to establish what has already been established by the father so this is what god is doing apostles means you have an apostolic calling to go and represent to represent christ again to the broken world amen this is a mandate god has given you and me and the second one is called the prophets prophets what do the prophets do the goal of the prophets is not to prophesy the goal of the prophets to equip the body to hear god by them for themselves today the goal of the prophet is to elevate themselves <laughs> they just say prophet is here i remember going to africa one african country you know we are streaming i will leave the name of the country un unnamed i landed there and uh, i saw a wall post the prophet has landed he will never be this the country will never be the same prophet daniel my full name is charles frederick daniel so they made a wall post saying prophet daniel has landed the nation will be never the same again because it doesn't sound so prophetic if it says prophet charles no but it sounds prophetic if it is prophet daniel i was under tremendous pressure you know because it's like there is an expectation on a prophet what is the goal of a prophet it's not to take you inside you know the goal of a prophet is not to bring you to that person the goal of the prophet is to bring you to christ to equip you so that you can have your own discernment to grow in the fullness of maturity i mean let's read this okay look at this it's quite a few words you're going to pay attention it's not in the screen so turn your bible ephesians 4 verse 11 he gave himself some to the apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers now he gives you almost that's why it's not on the screen so you need to pay attention he gives you almost 13 reasons why he gives you okay number 1 for equipping of the saints for the work of ministry why he has given you these gifts to equip for the work of the ministry okay for edifying of the body of christ till all we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro from carried on along with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking the truth in love may grow in all things unto him who is the head of christ from whom the whole body joined joined knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective work by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love it's quite mouthful but you get the point here it says here for the stature of the fullness of Christ to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that each one each part of the body does its share the modern church the structure that modern church have does not provide for each member to does its part one man is talking rest of you are listening does it do a good job come on talk to me the the structure should help the church if the structure is not helping the church the structure is not a blessing what is it it's a block it's a it's it's a hindrance now 
God says, hold on to me. Don't hold on to the structure. Today we are holding on to the structure. And this is the reason why church building may be filled on Sunday, but still there is chaos outside the building. Have you ever wondered, 110 years, Christian influences in this nation, sorry, in this city alone, but still there is less than 5% of the locals, I'm talking about locals, belong to Jesus. That something should tell us, that means the structure we have is not serving. So what is the goal? That's why I've been telling this. We will be gathering like this for the next two months or so. While we are gathering this, I will be sharing the vision. I'll be sharing what some of the things that God put in my heart. How we can move away from the structure to a place where God wants us to be. Where we can be an organic community that reaches out. That instead of doing church, we will be the church in the community. Instead of coming to your building called church, we will be the church in the community. Instead of taking the city for Christ, we will be that city that loves Christ. Amen? It's a paradigm shift. It takes time because we've been rooted in this paradigm called religion, church, building, meeting, program, attendance, one and a half hour service, 20 minutes song, 15 minutes, you know, some kind of programs, and 25 minutes so sermon, and then offering, tea time, off, and then move on. The rest of the Sunday to Monday, it's all we live our own life. I'm praying the book of Acts will be a reality. Amen. It will start with me. It will start with you. It will start with us. God doesn't look for a majority of people to transform a nation. He looks for a handful of available people. Amen. 300 people was enough for God to take a mighty army. Amen. He just needed two guys who said, in the name of Jesus. You know, the rest of them said they looked, in their eyes, we look like grasshoppers. These two guys says, the Lord has already given this land to us. And only those two guys enter the land. Amen. So I'm not looking for the whole congregation of Papa's house who are here watching online and those who couldn't make it because of con call they, to say, yes, Charles, let's go for it. I'm looking for a handful of people who can say, you know what, I may even go from here, transfer another place. But I don't want to go to another location, sit on the Sunday, you know, listen, I want to be the church, a community that brings life in the people's life. Amen. Okay. I, I'm not expecting all of you to say amen, because after saying this, some of you will be like, oh man, goodness, what's going on? Anyway, now, let's look at this, why this fivefold ministries are given. What are the fivefold? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These fivefold ministries are given to tackle five spirits in this nation, in the world. Those five are, they are called religious spirits. Number one is legalism. Are you taking notes? Please take notes. Number two, debate. Number three, opinion. Number four, judgment. And number five, criticism. These are five religious spirits. Okay, I'll repeat again. Legalism, debate, opinion, judgment, criticism. These are five religious spirits that dominates any religious mind. It doesn't matter. You're a Hindu, Muslim, Christian. If you are a religious person, by the way, religion does not mean it's Hindu. Huh? It's not mean Muslim. It's also Christianity. Why? We do have legalism in our religion. Hello? I remember one of my friend wear a t-shirt and a jeans to church. This is a very long time ago. This, you know. And uh, the pastor said to him, are you here for a fashion trip or uh, worshipping the Lord? You know, we criticize, judgmental. Criticize. Criticism, debate is another thing. It's a religious spirit, debate. We debate over things. You know, is the communion should be single cup or it should be an individual cup? You know, we do individual cups because of hygiene sake. Okay, some people say, it's from the same cup, brother. Yes, but 200 people. I saw people giving from the same cup, they make a saliva bridge. 
you know i do not want to be part of that cup do you do you i mean i mean if you want i can provide for you but i am going to still stick with my individual cup you know well, some people say brother you are going away from the gospel no it's not away it's just common sense common sense is not a common practice do you know that it says wash your hands after coming out of the bathroom but we many men i have seen that they don't wash hands i'm like i want to grab their shirt and come wash your hands man but i can't do that you are in the airport i mean that with the beard you will consider a terrorist you know but it's it's crazy right legalism debate opinion today we are so opinion oriented religious spirit. opinion yeah i don't like this i don't like this opinion we fall into this opinion number 4 judgment Billigram said this and I quote it's god's job to judge holy spirit job to convict my job to love today we say to god god you convict them <laughs> you know i will judge my dear brothers and sisters this is a religious spirit last but not the least it's criticism now you take all this fine you remember this i want you to remember this because this is where religious spirit rooted in legalism debate opinion judgment criticism all this how can you tackle this that's why god gives his gift the spirit apostles you represent him well prophets you help people to hear god evangelist you become a bridge maker not a bridge bomber pastor you are there to bring comfort and healing teachers so they can hear the word of god clearly amen what is the reason look at this reason here was was 13 it says here for equipping of the saints of the work of the ministry for edifying of the body of christ till all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of stature of fullness of christ my prayer is this that you will not just come every sunday to hear people sometimes they have said sunday is like recharging pastor i felt recharged then the whole week i get drained then come again on sunday i asked them what happens if you don't call what to do pastor no if you are on call you will put the bad phone on idle or what it shouldn't be the case come on church it shouldn't be the case you don't come to recharge you gathered for a purpose why because you are gathered for it's not just because on sunday you have to get you gather because the rest of the saints have something beautiful to share i want to hear what the saints have brought the good news how was the work of the lord in this week maybe there was a healing a miracle a breakthrough a restoration i want to hear those now i am equipped i'm encouraged i'm going back with the excitement to be the church not just sitting i'm equipping i'm charging myself we are overfed we are overfed with information but we are such you know there is no outcome outgoing is going on you know number 2 okay now i will i will i will wrap it up quickly in verse uh turn with me in verse 22 same chapter okay i'm because of lack of time i'm moving forward script few of this uh verse 20 onwards but you have not so learned christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in jesus that you put off circle that word put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on circle that word put on the new man which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness now what paul is saying here is making a distinction i'm going to give you three quick points the first one the blood of jesus christ he's talking about a old man and a new man old adam and the last adam the first adam brought death the last adam rescued us from death the first adam took us away from the presence of god the last adam brought us back into the garden in the presence of god okay so the blood of jesus christ has paid the penalty of sin many church preaches that which is good that's the entrance 
We talk about salvation, but we shouldn't stop there. Number two, the resurrection of Jesus took the power of sin. So it's not only get saved, but now you live under the, under the assurance that the resurrection, Jesus has taken away the power of sin over my life. Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit helps us to walk in the original design of God. And many times church is focused on bringing people to get saved, but then we don't tell them how to live a saved lifestyle. How to live not under the power of sin. How to walk in the fullness of original design. That's why I've said this before. I'm quoting again. You know, Jesus never raised Christians. He raised disciples. Amen. He's, he was not focused on how many disciples, how many Christians going to come. He was focused on discipleship. Discipleship can never happen in a setting like this. It happens on an individual coffee table. You know, two weeks ago, uh, it was uh, Brother Hatul's wife, Sharon, and, and uh, Daniel, and, and Lydia came. They brought a beautiful chocolate cake, and they were sitting and talking on the dinner table. We are just hanging out, and that's how we went to eat good, uh, you know, uh, Andhra food with Prateev's house. On the, on the table, talking, sharing, breaking bread, opening hearts, praying for one another. That's where discipleship happens. Here, it doesn't happen. Here it's, it's, it's a program. You are still waiting. If I still talk for another one more hour, you will say next week probably Zoom is better. You know why? Because in Zoom you can still be present and eat your chicken 65. Just turn off the camera and mute. Anyway, the host mutes you. So, Because your program, it's, it's 11, 11, 12, you are thinking. You start at 9.30, is he, he's still not, still one more prayer is there. Communion is there. Yeah. Chai time. Hmm? Anybody did not have any thought like that? Wow, you are such a whole... I'm so blessed to be your pastor. I am extremely blessed. Lord, I repent. You know? Come on, church. Because this place, it will not grow any discipleship. Where it happens? It happens in a coffee table, in a place where you break bread. You talk. Tell me about your pain. Tell me about your challenges. What's going on with your life? I want to hear the goodness of the Lord. Any miracle what you God did, all, most of your gifts are dormant in the church. That's not how God intended. Your gifts are here to bring the fullness of Christ into the body. Amen? Now, I wrote down here quickly seven things. Okay, oh, seven. It's already 11, 13, you are saying. <laughs> I can read some of your minds. Seven things. Put off, put on. Okay? I put off lust so that I can put on Christ. Holiness. How do we do that? We're not preaching on Sunday morning, but on, on the weekdays, on the home churches, where we sit and talk. What is your greatest battle? When you look at an opposite sex, what's going on in your mind? I told you my testimony. It's, you know, the most listened message of Papa's house is the topic we shared on sex. It's got the top, you know, because we just put the title sex, so many people clicked that title because maybe it's very attractive. <laughs> you know, and they listened. And I shared my testimony when I was 10 years old, how I got he, he caught into this phone and how God set me free. And I shared the testimony and brought so many people deliverance out of it because the work, work of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I put off lust, so I put on Christ's holiness. We need to talk about this. Christians are battling in this area. Christians are battling. Marriages are changing. Marriages are separated. Why? Because this is a big problem. Number two, I put off bitterness so that I put on Christ forgiveness. You know, Christians, G.K. Chesterton, an English writer used to say this, Christians are the most forgiven people. And then he says, Christians are also the most unforgiving people. We are the most forgiven people, right? Which God, which religion has told them, I have forgiven you. You have to do something in order to receive some kind of mercy. But our God, while we were yet sinners, Christ pursued us and loved us. We are the most forgiven people, but we are also the most unforgiving people. So, you can say Kumbaya on Sunday, but then on Monday, if you don't walk in forgiveness, you have done 
only religion that will take you nowhere number 3 i put off gossip and i put on christ what is christ truth that means i am not going to be involved in in partaking using my mouth to talk bad about others amen number 4 i put off anger and put on christ peacemaker not peacekeeper i put off sloppiness and shortcuts and put on christ excellence in everything i put off rudeness jerk and put off christ kindness i put off my agenda and put on christ the kingdom's agenda i want to ask you this question okay what is your agenda what is the goal of your life have you ever sat and said to the lord lord what is your agenda every year we do this and god is our witness my wife and me we do this we say god i tear my agenda i want you to build your agenda we have plans but we give it to you we have thoughts we have desires we have dreams but we give it to you bible says i commit all your work to the lord and he will establish your path so bring your agenda god, god never said you know don't bring your agenda i will write your agenda he said commit your work to the lord so commit but say god i bring all the plans agendas to you but i want you more than anything build your agenda in my life amen my brothers and sisters i want you to think this week what kind of church are you are you a church that meets only on sunday or your church that attends a program on sunday from 9:30 to 11:30 or are you a church that willing to see fullness of christ formed in you if that is not happening it is time to ask the lord lord make me a church that i want to be a church where christ is fully formed in me formed in my children formed in my relationship formed in my works place you know i pray this prayer because when i read the book of acts every time the non christians comes to encounter with the the first century christians something happens to them they say to them please i want to this i want that do people come to you and ask the christ you are worshiping makes me feel uncomfortable what are you following how are you living this life i want to know that secret of your life you know i want to be the church i want to be the church that christ is fully formed amen because the church right now is not fully formed it's just a program it's just an entertainment it's just something to make us feel good it makes you religiously satisfied because sunday you went to church you are not still in your lungi or pajamas watching something you know you did something you did something good so there is a tick point there is a star on your on your shoulder so that you can go happily ever after no happily for the next 6 days because next sunday again you have to fall into this but then what happens in between i want to pray that prayer that god will sh- you know jk chesterton said we want a church not to move with the world we want the church that moves the world do you want the church you want to be like that church that moves the world or move with the world yeah? because most of the church is now adopting to be modern modernism right everybody is there doing this thing let's do we we listen to some youtube channel some american church how they lead worship we want so also want to do that you know my prayer is that we will discover some of the treasures hidden in india you know no worship service is with tabla do you know tabla anybody know what is tabla i'm talking to indians you look like brother i know guitar i know rx8 hmm? tabla mirdangam clarinet where are those hidden treasures because we follow we look at somebody there michael jackson smoke machine four or five lights we also like and they are also jumping we also jumping that's not church there is a hidden treasure in every nation 
And God's agenda is to bring those hidden treasures out. Why? So that you will be a full measure to Christ. I am praying one day that there will be an incorporation of those attributes in the Indian churches. Amen. Here are some announcements. If you have missed any of our sermons, you can watch them by logging in on Papa's House through YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes and Facebook. We have a family support program where we support single mothers and their children by getting provisions through finances and opportunities to earn a livelihood through small businesses. Every Friday, through our homeless feeding program, our team prepares and distributes food packets for homeless people in and around Velour. We would encourage you to join us in this program by either preparing or distributing food packets and also by considering making your generous contributions through your finances. If you consider yourself to be a part of Papa's house, then we would encourage you to send your tithes and offerings. But if you are visiting Papa's house for a few occasions and led by the Spirit and you feel that Papa's house has made a difference in your spiritual life and your connection with Christ, you could consider sowing a small seed through an offering. We would make sure it falls on the good soil so that it reaps a good reward from God. You can find the details of the bank accounts and Google Pay should you decide to send in your offering to us. We will intimate to you once we have received it. Also, here are the links on how you can reach and follow us.